Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from Cinema Sound. Today we're going to be looking at where to put sounds in the 5.1 audio surround space using Adobe Audition. Now you don't have to use Adobe Audition to do this. You can do it in any digital audio workstation and most non-linear editors. I'm just going to be showing you in my favorite digital audio workstation. Now we're going to be listening to 5.1 on headphones using a special plugin that creates a binaural experience. So if you're not listening on headphones, it's probably going to sound kind of weird. So pop on your favorite pair. We're going to be listening to dialogue, sound effects, music, where to put them so that they all work with each other, and even figure out how to save a few CPU cycles in the process. Let's roll. So we're here in Adobe Audition in a pretty large format mix, all filled with all kinds of tracks of dialogue, music stems, ambiences, sound effects, foley, and more, along with the picture that's over here. Here's our 5.1 track panner. You can see here we've got left, center, right, the left surround, the right surround, and then all kinds of uh, LFE center and kinds of things like this, which we're going to be talking about in a minute. Let's just take a look at this scene. Uh, again, please have your headphones on. And then she gets hit. Bummer. So what, lots of stuff going on here. We've got a lot of sound effects, uh, the punches. There's weird sounds going on in the background, ambiences. We've got Foley. We've got, of course, a little bit of dialogue because dialogue is the easy one. So let's just jump into that and figure out what we're doing here. There's two windows that we use in Audition. We use the editor window where you can see all of the tracks here. And then the mixer window, which shows us the same representation of those vertical tracks, but in a horizontal way. It looks a lot more like what you're used to seeing on a mixing board with, you know, faders and uh, plugins and sends and all those kinds of things like this. So where's our dialogue? Let's start there. Well, there's only a scene with a couple of actors, so there's not that many dialogue tracks, some labs and some ADR, etc. And then we have a mono reverb track, which is like, why would you do that? We'll say so in a minute. And then we have two stereo reverbs. Now, there are lots of surround reverbs uh, that you can use, but we generally don't want to see dialogue in the center or the LFE channel. That just kind of confuses things. And it's very difficult to find a reverb that'll do quad only. So instead of doing that, uh, and by the way, it takes a lot of processing power, we'll take a stereo reverb and then we will pan it, as you can see here, to the left and right front. And then we'll take the same reverb and alter the settings just a little bit, giving it a little more pre-delay and maybe a little different damping and high frequency, and maybe even depending on the reverb, a different length of reverb and pan those directly to the left and right surround. And what that does is have us completely bypass center and LFE and not even have the computer have to deal with processing it. And we get a beautiful sound especially in a room where we have to make a big sound. There's a giant cement room. So here's what those sound like, just working on their own. I'm going to turn the mono reverb off for a second. I need exfiltration right away. Here it is with just the surrounds. I need exfiltration right away. And just the fronts. I need exfiltration right away. And back together. I need exfiltration right away. It makes a really great sounding low CPU uh, reverb, and you can do this with any stereo reverb, which is totally dope. Now, what about this mono reverb that's here? Why would we have a mono reverb? Well, I use a little ambient reverb, very, very short, to help cut over the scenes of any editing that I'm making. And since I hate using room tone, it helps me to be able to have things super clean, add my own ambiences instead of having to rely on room tone and have the audience not notice that there's big dips or cuts out of the dialogue. Turning off the room reverb and turning up this mono reverb really, really loud on a piece of ADR, you can hear what it's doing. What if I can't? It's a very short ambient room, but if we bring it down to a reasonable level, it helps quite a bit. What if I can't? And if we mute it. What if I can't? It feels very dry, very ADR-like, but adding it in there along with the room makes a big difference in realism. What if I can't? 
beautiful. And I'm using the Valhalla room because it's super low processor intensive and really easy to use. Now you'll ask me, well, why is it mono? Why isn't dialogue stereo? Well, in 5.1, we don't want ever dialogue to come out of both left and right speakers unless you were doing some kind of effect. It's almost always coming out of the center channel, which is mono. So our blending reverb, like this mono reverb here, it needs to be mono as well. For our room reverb, it needs to match the ambiences, which is always going to be outside of the center channel and in the quad left and right and left surround, right surround. Here in Audition, you can see that you actually, if you put the puck just here, it doesn't go out of the center speaker. It actually goes out of left and right. But if we put it into this little notch that's just here, it bypasses, turns off the left and right speaker, and you get all center channel as long as the center level is up full. If the center level is all the way down and you put this puck into the center channel, you'll get nothing. Which brings up a good point. Wherever you put this puck, notice this is a stereo channel, so it keeps its stereo field Wherever you put it, it will somewhat come out of the center channel. You can see these little lines, these little white lines. They tend to give you a good idea of how much volume is coming out of each one of these channels. A little bit in this case out of right surround, a lot out of right, some out of center, some out of left. Until I bring the center channel down. Notice that as the center channel comes down, the left and right grow to compensate, which is super cool. There's no such uh, levels like that for the LFE. It just, you kind of have to look at the meter down here. If I want to make this wider, I simply go to stereo spread and I can turn it all the way around and have a grand old time. Same with the overall angle if it's easier for you to use dials instead of moving the puck around. If you have a channel that you just want to go to LFE and be uh, just there, it's easy. You just click on the LFE and everything goes away. And now the only place this is going is out the LFE, everything else being grayed out. Which begs the question, hey, Mark, what's LFE? Well, that's low frequency effects. And we want to be very careful about what we put out the LFE. A lot of people make the mistake of just sending anything with bass out the LFE and it really tires audiences out and ruins mixes because of the omnidirectional nature of low frequencies. So that's why they call it uh, an E, the effects channel. Otherwise, it would just be LF, low frequency. So really be judicious about what, we, what you send into that LFE, and we'll explain that in a moment. So dialogue is primarily going out that center speaker, and then production audio, you can possibly have it in stereo if you've recorded it in stereo. If you haven't, then it needs to go into that center channel or something even perhaps more narrow like this. Now, if you notice that all of the outputs of the dialogue tracks, including the reverbs, are all going to the dialogue bus, not to the master. That's this channel right here. That allows me to be able to turn all of the dialogue bits up and down all together and add a general EQ that I like. This is a pretty draconian, high frequency, low cut one that affects all of the dialogue channels all at once. So if I need to move everything in the dialogue channels, instead of doing every one, 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 one like this, I just move the dialogue bus or put a plug in on that and it fixes them all. Now, some of you may ask, how do I get the dialogue channel to go to these reverbs? And that's a fair question. You could instantiate on every one of these channels under reverb here, but that takes a lot of computing power and it's unnecessary. Instead, what we use is a send, that's this S1 here, and we can say, hey, go to the stereo front reverb. And now we have a panner and we can say how much we want it to go there. And then for send two, we can say go to the stereo dialogue surround and go do the same. And now it's being sent to this front and back reverb happily. Now let's jump to ambiences because that'll be the next thing that you want to mix in your mix from the Department of the Redundancy Department. Ambiences are the lowest part of your mix and should be incredibly low, kind of the baseline of your overall sound. And you want to have a stereo ambience that's in the front and a stereo ambience that's different in the back, like this one here, ambience one, ambience two. Let's see if we can just solo in here. A little watery one. A little roomy one here. And that's in the rear. Together, they make a really full ambience. You don't want to have the same ambience in the front and the back because that's not how even real life works. And you, I just like to pan them pretty hard to left and right and to maybe a little bit more mono as they are in this case, depending on how wide they are. But otherwise, 
you can send them directly to the individual speakers in the back. No center, no LFE for sure, unless you're doing some kind of effect. Then for Foley, it's wherever the Foley that that actor is producing, his dialogue or her dialogue is. If they're in the middle, then that's where the Foley is. If you pan them somewhere else, then that's where the Foley is. You wouldn't want to have the sounds of the human being making shirts and noises and skin and footsteps in the middle while their voice is over here. I mean, unless you're doing some kind of dismembered body thing which is pretty weird. So here for footsteps, we just lock them into the center because that's where all the dialogue is in this case, and we're good to go. The reverbs in the room, however, are expansive in the quad field. Then we come to music, and music like dialogue and all the sound effects has its own bus, just like it has here, so that if I wanna pull it up and down, I don't have to do each one of these stems, of which there's usually tons of them. I can just do this and pull that bus down. I can also carve the dialogue out of the music itself with an EQ so that I can bring up the, the music a little bit louder and have a better emotional resp response from the audience without having to mess with the clarity of the dialogue. So this is an orchestra score, so it's got a lot of stems and typically you wanna add a feel like you're at the podium of the conductor when you do that. So here are where all the woodwind stems go. You can see it's kind of a little bit into the surrounds, not much, but definitely a nice stereo representation. The brass, we pan over a little bit. Here's the choir way in the back. Let's take a listen to them. Having them in the back is a really cool effect, a little eerie. And then loops and techno things, pretty much just regular stereo. Um, and then uh, percussion, dubstep effects get a little bit of low frequency effect because there's some low thumpingness in there, but it doesn't happen that often. Keys, uh, there's some synth stuff here. Orchestral percussion because of the timpani and maybe the big uh, taiko drums. Again, it has some LFE. Harp gets panned really nicely in its own little space, slightly over yonder. And then strings are panned as they would appear in the orchestra. And because there's, you know, a lot of low, low, sustaining lows in the orchestra field, we've got a little low frequency effects in the double bass. But we've actually automated this. So when the action starts, we actually pull that out of the LFE. Otherwise, it interferes with the sound effects that are going thump, thump, thump down there, the gunshots and the punches and and the body falls and that kind of stuff. For other genres, you know, you can have fun, but music is sort of the wild frontier as to wherever you want to put it. It's probably going to work as long as it's not interfering with the same space as the dialogue. Also remembering that you always have a war between music and sound effects, which one is going to be louder than the other at any given time because they're not both loud at the same time. You want to have one or the other. And we talk about why you choose one or the other in our cinema sound education. With sound effects, it's a little bit different than the others because you have multiple kinds of sound effects. Hard effects like a, a punch or a hit or whatever, a body fall, or special effects like a car crash or a gun or a laser beam or a ship going by or something like this. And obviously, the special effects sometimes can get panned around and do all kinds of fun things, which we love to do using our friend Mr. Puck over here. And you can use as many layers as you want to make your sound effect, as we talk about in the cinema sound education. But you never want to have any one layer of any sound effect living in both the center channel and the left and right. It causes all kinds of face problems and mix issues for those in a cinema. And especially if you're doing binaural 3D audio, you want to choose a layer to live in center or or left and right. You can have multiple layers living in either, but no one layer living in both. It causes all kinds of phase issues. Once you have all this put together, then I take all of the buses, the ambience, the sound effects, the foley, the music, and the dialogue, and those then get bussed into a print master upon which I do any kind of mastering EQ that I want, including the roll off of the frequencies from the LFE at 48 decibels per octave, everything above 85 hertz for that subwoofer so that it can just focus on the low frequencies of the LFE. From there, we put it into our master output where we run a little limiter and we make sure that nothing goes over point minus 0.2 decibels to make sure that quality control doesn't give us that call because we never want to hear that call. From here, those are sort of the basics. There's no real rules in surround sound except those that work for you and again, have kept quality control from calling. Find out what your rules are for making incredibly creative mixes based on what I'm giving you. Break some rules, break some eggs, and make some omelets. And let us know what you've discovered and maybe even upload a mix or two so that we can all wonder at your mixing prowess. Mixing in 5.1 is an awesome experience, and it's easy to do if you know a couple of the secrets that we use in Hollywood to make things layer together and balance for that great cinematic or even binaural headphone experience. Even if you're
where you're stuck. 